And I'm so happy that you are here. So thank you, Scott, Ian, Morat, Nuno, Arasimo, Michael, and um, Tessa. Um, okay, Henrik, say about something about you. So what do you trading? What do you do now? What is your background? It's your show now. Yeah. Um, so my background is actually in engineering. I've been doing that. I've been working at sea for about 20 years as an engineer and then uh, ashore in shipping companies as technical superintendent and so on. So that's my background. And uh, I've had my own company also for a little while. Uh, then I decided to, to take on trading. I like the idea of the flexibility and the freedom and uh, hopefully also the financial freedom eventually over time. So the main reason for me was, was you know, that I was looking towards freedom and not having to, to work together with, uh, or yeah, with other people. <laughs> That's, it's not that I don't like other people, but it's like, you know, decide for yourself what to do. And um, so I started right now, it's actually one year and three months, four months almost ago, since I opened my first chart. I had no clue what to do, but uh, it came to me eventually. I took a few online courses, like most people, I suppose, uh, watched YouTube and so on. And uh, one of my first mentors was, or mentor, but actually someone I followed was Tom Hugard. And I liked his uh, trading style with the price action. And I liked his approach towards the mental game. So naturally, uh, since he was trading the five minute chart and I was trading the five minute chart as well. And I spent huge amount of hours on, uh, on uh, back testing and uh, research, trying to find my own setups and uh, testing the setups by back testing, like back testing several months, year, two years, and then trying them real time and I I think I was quite good at, at the mechanical approach like if I had decided based on my back testing that I wanted to to take a trade on a certain uh, certain signal then then I did it uh, but the problem for me was basically managing the trade and, and uh, finding the good exits and, and managing my stop loss and all those things that that doesn't come uh, by itself immediately of course so anyway, I think in February, I, I joined Chat with Traders uh, community. And that was after I had listened to, to a few podcasts by Chat with Traders. And this is also when I met Patrick because he was my uh, accountability partner from the very beginning. I joined the TAP program from the very, very beginning. So that's how we came to, to talk. And then, yeah, then it developed over that. We, we traded together a lot and uh, I changed some of my uh, approaches and, and, and the style and uh, I kept some of it. So I tried to find the golden nuggets from, from both sides, so, so to speak. And here we are today. Yeah, nice, nice. So um, let's look back um, 60 days ago before we start um, the prop firm journey. Um, what was your main trading journey? Uh, what, what do you trade? You, you, you talk about the five minutes. So what was you looking for? Basically, I think I'm a breakout trader. That's, uh, I didn't mean it. It's not meant like that. I didn't mean it to be like that, but uh, that's how it became. That was, that suited my personal style, let's say. So I need to see the breakouts and um, I trade the indices. I should mention that as well. Yeah, indices, uh, mostly DAX and uh, FTSE on the European sessions and then Nasdaq and Dow, Dow Jones uh, on the American sessions. But uh, yeah, since our um, journey here, I've gone over to only trade in Nasdaq. So uh, yeah, the, the setups are mostly yeah, breakouts. And uh, I need to see the price action. Basically, I have a kind of a pattern that I see first, but I don't take a trade based on that pattern only. I also need to see the price action. and what we call the nervous candle, so to speak, that we, <laughs> we we see that, okay, there is something pushing here and hopefully it's pushing in the right direction. And then I take the trade and that's it. Yeah, nice, nice. And do you remember um, what we have changed that you that you was ready to say, ah, oh, now I'm interested to become a prop term further. So I remember 
when when we have our um, AP sessions um, for the TEP program where we was meet regular. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest parts what we talk about was every time um, Katte loses fast. So yes. um, I was talk to you every time. So uh, this was the AR strategy, um, two to one or three to one. And yeah. I was talk to you every time, man, <laughs> you have your uh, Katya loses fast. And I remember um, that you was, was a little bit um, depressed because uh, you have some good winning weeks and then you have some, some week where you make some losses. Yes. Um, and, and then I was talk to you um, why you why you use your own capital and um, why you don't chose um, some prop firm. I, yeah. I talked to you also about um, the trading copies um, when you have a trade copy here and you trade the futures. Yeah. So you place maybe one trade and you place this in 10 accounts, yeah. prop firm accounts. And the risk is much easier for you mm -hmm. and you can make tons of money. Yeah. And I think this was the point where I catch you, correct? Yes, I think so. And I want to go back also to where you said cut the losers quickly and cut, you know, cut them short. And yeah, you're right. I, I was trading uh, based on R's, like risk to rewards ratios. And uh, I could, you know, if I had decided that, okay, this is what I'm prepared to, to risk to get that kind of reward. But then if the market wouldn't want to give me that reward, I would still let the market sometimes uh, take me out with a full with a full R, let's say, loss. And uh, <clears throat> you taught me, you showed me also to trade on the one minute chart instead, which uh, is better in a way, in, in one way, I think it's better when it comes to determining if you want to cut the losers very quickly because you can see the price action more clearly and the patterns there. So I became, I would say, quite effective with, uh, with that after a while to cut the, the losses. That was the main point, I think, for me that turned it around. Because like you said, I had a couple of actually months, good months, uh, where I really confirmed that my backtested setups and strategies really worked. But then in, I think it, it was in April, uh, late March, early April, I had a losing month and it just, I just kept on losing and I... Basically, I didn't know what to do. And you, you just told me, why do you keep hanging on to those losers? Why, why do you give back the money when you, have, when you have a profit, even if it's not one R, one full R, what you decide that you want? Even if you have the profit, just take it. Take the profit and then get in again if it goes the right way. So that was a big turning point for me. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember uh, some lesson from uh, my famous boxer. It's Mike Tyson. He say, everybody have a plan until you get the punch in the face. Yes. So as a trader, every trader have a plan. Every trader have a backtest plan until you get the punch from the market. Yes. So, <laughs> and and in this case, changes, so, yeah. yeah, the market is always changes. And um, I think this was the beginning um, where we say, okay, now it's maybe time for you. Um, first, we, we change your your strategy here. Yeah? So you was trading in the morning. Yeah. And I was told to you, hey, you miss all the action from the US market. Yeah. You remember? So yeah. what was what was you doing? Yeah, you know, I was trading uh, from nine o'clock in the morning when European markets opened and I traded until uh, basically lunchtime. So three hours. And then I was doing something else. I also had my company. I still had my company on the side, uh, just doing some consultancy work. I did that for a couple of hours. And then I started to trade uh, when the U.S. markets open, which would be three uh, thirty our time, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I traded until basically five o'clock, and that was it for me. So, yeah, when when we started to trade, then uh, then I just let go of the morning sessions. I didn't trade it anymore, and then we started to trade the American afternoon sessions instead. And, and I will I, I see the <laughs> the action there is uh, so much. Uh, greater than actually the European sessions. So, yeah, and also it was the big impact for you. I remember um, because of the tools. So when we when we watch the European market as European people, we have not the tools, or we we can have the tools, but we pay so much money for this. The level um, two day. Yeah, but we can we can use many tools for the US market, 
Mm -hmm. um, if everyone has some interest, they can write us some direct messages or, or no problem. Um, but you, this was a game changer for you when I talked to you about level two uh, options flow and all the stuff, how you can see how the, the future market is rising here. Yeah? So yeah. I give you the example about the QQQ and the SPY, the yeah. ETFs. It was never before in your mind, correct? No. And now I must say that I feel completely naked if I don't have the the, the tape in front of me, like the tickers, yeah? And uh, when I see the level two, I I can, yeah, of course I can trade without it maybe, but I feel naked. So I need to have that on one of my monitors all the time, you know? And, uh, and don't forget you, the news. The news. <laughs> and, and what, what really... Uh, convinced me to start a subscri subscription with the news was when we had that fake explosion on the pentagon yeah that oh yeah oh one, that's month ago or one and a half months ago and we were sitting there and trading and and uh, you had your news on and i think you you heard something or you saw on twitter i don't remember now but you said yeah Shit, I, I, I was and we, just, we just took a short position and we just wrote it yeah this was the pentagon news fake uh, um i have my news quark on yeah. Um, and we get the message that a bomb is exploding near the Pentagon. Which is uh, terrible. But, yeah, but <laughs> this is completely terrible. <laughs> but no confirmation um, and all this stuff. But nothing I was, on the news, nowhere. Yeah, no, nothing I mean, on the, the news, news. Nothing, yeah. nothing. No. Uh, and I told you, come, let's put us to full money power and, and short the shit like, like now we can. And yeah. we do it. So I do yes. it. You was the first, uh, the first seconds you was not I'm not shaking. I was hesitating. I, was hesitating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't go all in. So. Yeah, but, we uh, go all in, all in, all in, and we shot it like shit. So and we make big money. So it was it was really nice. Um, but yeah, so this was the beginning. So and then I think we um we we make a point um how we select the right prop trading, for, um what meets your your needs. So what we do um tell the people something how we select the right prop from what what we are looking for all, yeah first of all this was completely new to me I, I didn't even know about it i've heard i heard about the smb capital and, and those things but i thought well this is not for me that's that's way out of my league and uh, then you showed me a few examples patrick where you know you can join this prop firm or join that prop firm uh, just by a, an evaluation account and if you make it you make it if you don't make it then you know you can go on to the next one or or whatever so we started to look at that and um, i think first i was concerned about the price in a way so how, how much do i have to pay for this so we found a few prop firms with good discounts <clears throat> where i bought hey, it was 90 percent. this is not a good discount it wasn't fantastic discount it was only 20 us dollars so, so <laughs> i bought the account i think it was actually 16 dollars for an account 100k account and then i came into the first uh mental pitfall i would say because when i was trading that account it didn't mean anything to me because i only spent 16 dollars on it i didn't you know i tried to follow my rules but somewhere in the back of my head i didn't care about it <laughs> so i just i pissed it away one account after the other and uh, just <laughs> buy a new one no problem it's so fun it's so fun to put on like uh, 10 MQs and see what happens, yeah? <laughs> but that's, that's a learning experience. Yeah. But so this is backtesting of uh, uh, live backtesting, yeah? So okay. it's not backtesting, it's forward testing. How so, not to? Yeah. But yeah, so this was, this was a big mental issue, yeah? So yeah. Um, because... Um, uh, not to gamble and to trade it was it was a, bi a big thing yeah so mm -hmm. if you have maybe uh, 10 accounts and you can buy in bundle with 10 accounts and you pay maybe 25 US dollars for this um, mm -hmm. then then you then you start to gamble so you put the max full of buying power in it and and see what has happened so maybe it's you get it or maybe you lose it because you have 10, 10 accounts fuck off Correct. Yeah. So th this yeah, was the correct. biggest, the biggest issue, and uh, for all people who, who will be get funded, I think, it's it's not a good idea um, to take it not serious, because mm -hmm. otherwise, um, 
we, we, we talk about often that we're not going to rate good habits. You remember? Yeah, yeah. So we were thinking, hey, man, when we now trade like this, we get bad habits. Yes. We, we speak about every day when, when the day was over about the habits. What, what habits we can rate now? And so I think if you both, trade... of us, both of us, in a way, came, fall, fell into that bit as well. You, yeah. as a very experienced trader, you did it as well. I mean, when we looked at the end of the day, how many trades did we put on today? It was like 219 or 182, you know, something like this. Completely yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah, respect I... whatsoever for the account. Yeah, I buy the challenge also um, that that we can see what has happened so um, that we can trade together. So we have mm -hmm. the same rules, we trade together. Yeah. And I think we play it like a shit. Yeah. And this was the biggest yeah. mistake. Um, this, this was one of the mistakes. So, um, but after this, so we, we become seriously, yeah, I think um, 10 days, we, we lost 10 days um with with all the shit gambles so yeah. uh, we can we can call it gamble so it's it's fine so it's a yeah. bad habit don't do it i think it's um, like an 18 year old that can go to a nightclub for the first time of his life he will get pissed drunk every day yeah and he tastes uh, I, i don't say it no. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah. okay so after this what we do um i think we was we was saying okay now Let us take it seriously, and mm. we and we we watch all all prop films. What is what is um, what is what uh, happened? So, I think we watch all forex prop films. So you you say to me, hey, uh, what rules have the prop films, and why have they the rules? Yeah. So we yeah. we, we treated like a business at the end. Mm -hmm. So we was watching uh, all prop films. So what are the rules from the prop films? Mm -hmm. um, I think um, they have many, many different rules. So many have gambling rules. Mm -hmm. So um, the average lot rules, size. For example. Yeah, we have the news rules. You cannot trade on the news sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we have the rules. You can uh, trade only 20 uh, contacts each day. Yeah. Um, we have the rules about uh, max position size. We have the drawdown rules. We have the end of the day drawdown. We have the trailing drawdown rules. Um, there are so many things outside. And we see also um, that maybe you have a good entry price for the challenge. But if you get funded, you pay a lot that mm -hmm. you get the funded account. Yeah. Do you remember there was someone you pay maybe 100 US dollars? We, we don't say any name now. You pay 100 US dollars, but when you get the funded account, you have to pay 900 US dollars for the signing fee that you get in funded trader. So, and and this was completely shocked us. You remember, yeah? Uh, yeah, I remember. So, and in this case, and in this case, we we was looking for for someone who who fits your needs. So you are a futures trader, and yeah. uh, we we want not the rules. So we want not the news rules. We want uh, so. Uh, we want a good drawdown for us so that that, we, that you can handle it so this was was the most one so that we have not thinking about the, uh, the trailing drawdown and yeah. we want completely free in our trading style so if we maybe trade 100 contacts today maybe we won't trade tomorrow only 10 contacts so we want not uh, have any gambling rule uh, yeah. something like this yeah. and and we can name it so so we found apex for you um and mm -hmm. this this was pity on meat so tell the people something about um yeah how, so how it was going yeah <clears throat> um one of the biggest issues for me was of course the trailing drawdown i was not used to that from my own account i was trading cfds on my own account before and uh, the trailing drawdown was really giving me a headache and some of the prop firms offered really small drawdown and the others bigger um so that was important for me then uh, the rules well you know uh, i think we have one thing in common uh, and that is that we want to trade the big moves yeah and that's something i did before as well uh, on my cfd account i had actually some setups that i had only for news and uh, we traded that as well together uh, the the earnings and whatever 
of course your uh, your performance was way better than mine but anyway uh, we we had the same idea i think um so that was important to not be locked out over the news for example i want to yeah. be able to trade that then the pricing i mean once you get funded if you get funded then it's important with the pricing for that as well and um yeah i think those were the main issues for me that i wanted to to keep under control let's say to the, to suit my to suit my trading style and my needs um so we found this prop firm we tried a couple of them and we found this uh, prop firm in the end uh, i think we we could say the name yeah yeah i was saying this yeah apex apex um where i think i i just got a good feeling for them it was like they seemed very serious, but still they, they they let you run your own game to a certain point. And the, the price was okay. I mean, the entry price to get the evaluation account was okay. And uh, now once I have passed the evaluation for one of my accounts, I can see also that the, uh, the price for the live account is very good as well. So, yeah. That would, that's what we chose. Okay, let us make a break here, um, Henrik. So, Ian, mm -hmm. maybe uh, you can speak and ask a question. Yeah, hi, Henrik. Um, so, uh, just curious about is it correct that you opened up, did you say 10 different prop firm accounts, or were you joking? No, no, it was uh, not 10 different prop firms, but it was. Uh, I think I opened 25 accounts, actually, all in all, with the two different prop firms. Oh, okay, uh, with two different prop firms, got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I must say something about this. So we was first um, choosing Lilo, Lilo Trading, and sometimes they have some, some good pricing. So they have a bundle. You can have 10 accounts, uh, and, and you must qualify with one account in 30 days. So you get 10 accounts and you can trade the 10 accounts like you want, but only one can qualify. So, and, and the biggest issue in this is when you have 10 trading accounts, you, you get really good comfortable. You say, yeah, man, if I uh, pump up one account and I play it like not safety, you do it, boom, you, and you lose your first account. And then you say, man, I have nine accounts left. And you do it again, 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 again. And at the end, you have maybe only one account or two accounts. But then you have the bad habit because you play uh, eight times before really shit games and then you lose all your 10 accounts. And then you buy again for 25 US dollars, 10 accounts. So, and, and this, this was, the this, this was what, what we're saying about, um, it it's, it's looks so good that you have 10 accounts and only one qualify. But um, if you don't take it seriously because you pay only 25 US dollars, maybe therefore, and so the, the price is maybe not a pain for you, um, you develop bad habits for the trading. So you get you, your risk management is poor, your, your, your showing the trades is poor, and, and this was not good. So this was, this was the point where we say, hey, now we have to stop this. We must become serious. We must trade our trading like a business and not like a gamblers. So it was completely gambling at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, this was losing 10 days. You, uh, Henrik, you mentioned earlier about um, your stop losses were that you were losing more money than you needed to because your stop losses weren't quite set correctly. Is that, did I hear that correctly? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, it's a bit tricky to, to just say it like that i think i think they were set correctly in a way but what i should have done was to basically if i saw that the market was changing its behavior and and uh, even if it didn't uh, hit my stop loss yet then you can basically tell that now there is like a 80 percent chance that i'm going to be stopped out but i didn't stop myself out then i just waited for for the market to go down and stop me out to accept the loss and i think that that is something as a new trader, uh, you know, uh, for me, you're listening to so many people and, and, uh, and so many people are saying you have to accept your losses. Losing is a part of the trading business or game. Yeah. 
And I think there is a very fine line between accepting losses and being complacent about the losses. Like, okay, could I have had, could I have had uh, prevented this loss if I've done something differently? Could I just uh, trail my stop loss or, or, you know, tighten it up a little bit when the market started to go against me? All of those little things. And I think, like I said, I think the, the biggest, uh, biggest contributing factor for me to that that I took uh, heavier losses than I needed to was because of this that I heard over and over again uh, from different mentors or YouTube uh, players that you have to accept your losses and I think that got to me that I, I just accepted them too much unnecessarily. Uh -huh. So um, did you find that you would end up uh, getting out of your positions prior to the, your stops getting hit. And uh, did you end up having to cultivate a feel for the markets, like actually paying attention more than you normally would if you just mm -hmm. set the stop and they say, hey, well, I've, I've got my stop set. I don't need to pay much close attention. Yep. How, how did that yep. work for you? You know, if we if we go back to the, that part of not paying so much attention, uh, I have to go back to my backtesting routines, how I do that, how I did my research. So I did my research on the backtesting only on paper. I printed out charts. I printed out charts for like 500 pages of uh, months worth and years worth of charts. And I just, you know, took a pen and I drew, drew lines and I said, okay, so if I, if I enter here, then I have my stop loss here and I will not take profit until I'm one R, like, as much as I have at stop, as much as, uh, if, if I have 40 points uh, stop loss, for example, I need 40 points profit before I take and move my stop loss. And when I did that on paper, I often came up with like 50% win rate, 55% win rate, whatever. And <clears throat> that was completely enough. But then when you trade it live, you have to realize that you will not meet that kind of performance live. Whatever you do on paper, you will not never meet that live. So maybe you will meet, I don't know, 50% of that live. And uh, I think my problem was that um, I just didn't take all the trades that I should have taken because I was simply not there in front of the screen and or I was afraid or something else. So when I took the trades, and waited for me to be stopped out, then then I just lost too much. And uh, when when me and Patrick started to discuss this, I like you said, I developed, a, I tried to develop, and I think I did it. I had I have developed and a feel, an intuition uh, for the market to tell me that okay, now either it's going to break or it's not going to break. So let's move my stop loss to break even immediately, more or less. And if it doesn't break and goes back on me, I will be stopped out. But it can always break again. So then I will go in again. I will not get paralyzed and, and say, okay, I was stopped out. So what do I do now? I go and get a cup of coffee. No, I just wait for, for the next break again. So I can get stopped out like three times on break even before I get the runner, before I get the trade. But that is better than to wait for the stop, for the market to go back on me because it could have done that as well just as just as well as going the right direction it could have gone back on me and instead of being stopped out and break even i could have been stopped out on minus 40 points for example with my old style i don't know if that makes sense but uh, that's uh, that's yeah great yeah and also ian um he was asking about um the rules uh, from the prop forms correctly mm -hmm. so I can say something about this. So um, let's let's talk about two minutes about this. So when you see the prop firms, um, start with the forex prop firms where you can trade uh, forex, you can in trade indices, you can can trade gold, you can trade CFDs like this. So we have some some someone of this. We have the fivers. Um, we have FTMO. We have my forex fund. Um, this the three biggest ones. And then we have some others. So at the moment, when, when you watch the market closely, many prop firms uh, pop out. And on the website, most of the time, they have all the same rules. You think like, hey, it's uh, you can choose maybe only the price where you get the better price. But um, you find the details and the fine prints. <laughs> and this, this is the dangerous thing. Um, 
I think uh, from the traders, maybe only 1% look to the fine prints um, before he buy. So in the fine prints, you find maybe some gambling rules. Um, this means you must have uh, an average from your last week. You cannot um, have maybe 50% uh, trade more 50% than last week or 50% less than last week. When you do this, um, then you gamble. So this is one rule. And this is, this, this is very hard, this rule. And then you have um, a second one. You have the, the uh, stop loss rule. So you have place uh, stop losses. Um, then you have maybe um, uh, news. You cannot trade the news. You cannot trade the FOMCs um, when it's beginning on something like this. You, you will find all these things in the fine prints. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is, this is my advice for all people who get interesting and get funded. Look first in the fine prints. What's in the fine prints before you buy something or marry it with something? And the, the biggest issue is um, the payouts. When you get the payouts, so some prop firms give you the payouts, be weekly. This is very nice when you get this. Other prop firms give you um, your first payout 30 trading days after 30 trading days. What does this mean? So you have to trade 30 trading days when you get funded. So this could be happen. You get your first payout in two after two months when you start as funded trader. Mm -hmm. And this is a big issue because it's the risk for the prop firm. It's very nice. You had, they have maybe 60 days to, to pay you out. But in 60 days, it could be possible that you blow up your funded account and you get no payout. Mm -hmm. And um, the other things is the limitation of the payouts and also yeah uh, someone is uh, is writing so um, what is really important also if you have some end of the day drawdown or you have a static drawdown or you have a trailing drawdown or what the, what they offer as drawdown um, in, in trading uh, stop and end of the day or a max drawdown so you you will find this all in the fine prints in, in details so, and sometimes um, what you trade in the evolution is not the same what you trade as a funded trader. As a funded trader, you get harder rules. And you must see if you, you, if you can work with this, is this your trading style or not? Sometimes the evolution looks like sexy, but when you get the funded trader, it looks no more sexy because you trade with life capital. And they, and they give you other rules. So in the Forex, it's really special. Um, in the stock world, you have trade the pool, you have day trade the world. Um, I think, I think there's some some other one, but this is peanuts. Uh, day trade the world and trade the pool is the biggest one, and they have completely different styles. So on day trade the world, you have to pay for your losses, so that you have no challenge, you have no challenges. Uh, you have give them money that you get, uh, uh, you get instant funding. Um, so you, you have to pay for your losses. You get the money. You get maybe 20,000 US dollars, but you have to give them 500 US dollars as deposit for your losses. Mm -hmm. So this is a one way. On Trader Pool, you have the challenge. Um, you have different rules. And on the futures world, it's, it's the same. So sometimes you have end of the day drawdown. You have payouts. Um, you get not the full payout from, from, from your profits. You get limited payouts. Maybe you get first, the first month, you get 1,000. The second month, you get 1,000. The third month, you get 1,000. And after the third month, you get the full payout. So because they, they told you they want long-term relationship, it's, you can look in the, in the, in the French pens. They say they want with you long-term relationship. But when you realize four months, after four months, you get the, the full payout. Uh, it's only mathematic. In, in four months, how possible is it that, that the people lost your funded account? I would say more than 60%. I have no idea, but my feeling is more than 60% will lose their account and they get never the full payout. So this is, this is how you're looking. You must looking for the fine prints and you will find that every, in everyone. So on the website, they will look always sexy. They look all the same. It's the pricing, all the stuff. 
but you have to to watch in the fine prints. You will find the different in the in the, in the fine prints. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so we have a, a quick question here from. Um, what about the trailing drawdown with Apex? And to add to that, when is the drawdown uh, calculated from? Is it intraday or is it end of the day or end of the week? You know, uh, uh, Apex is intraday. So, and, th and this, this was the curious thing. So um, what we have to handle, Henrik and me. So on Apex, it's always from, from your high um, maybe you make now on your first trade 500, uh, you are 500 US dollars in profit, but you don't take your profit and you take maybe your profit when you 100 US dollars profit. So this means you lost 400 US dollars from your drawdown. So because your high was 500 and you ca catch it only on 100. So this means you lost 400 US dollars for your drawdown. This is the trailing drawdown, not the end of the day drawdown. So, and the risky thing is when you trade big um, with a trailing drawdown and you have not enough trailing drawdown, maybe you have only 1,500 trailing drawdown and you trade the news um, or some earnings and you know, it can be very fast up. You may be five, 600 in profit and then you get a strong pullback in seconds and you find maybe your, your position in 100 US dollar loss. What is this meaning with a trailing drawdown? 600 profit, 100 loss, you lost 700 US dollars from your trailing drawdown. So this is the, the trailing drawdown. It's always from your top uh, to your loss. So this is the dangerous thing from the trailing drawdown. So, that and this the, is- That was the this, most, uh, <laughs> what to say, the biggest change for me as well, because I was used to just staying in the trade. That's also something we discussed, Patrick, yeah? Yeah. That when we had this, uh, pullbacks uh, when I traded my my old style and and on the five minute chart uh, a pullback was completely normal for me and I would just add to the trade after the pullback I wouldn't think about getting out just because it's a pullback but if the if the market doesn't go up after the pullback then I would have lost like uh, whatever thousand dollars or something in trailing drawdown yeah yeah this was why we was um, change the strategy yes so we were yeah. saying okay, we, we cut our losers very fast, but when we have some profit, we take the profit yeah. and, and we wait for the next setup. If, if we see something what is good to trade, bam, uh, we, we are in again, we catch mm -hmm. the move, we catch the yeah. 200 US dollars, but we get out because yeah. of the trailing dollar, correctly? I take, I take profit much faster now than I did before. And uh, I saw a question about that uh, as well. Uh, take profit orders. No, I, I never, actually, uh, I don't know so much about this, but I never do any orders. I just play, you know, market okay. price and everything. Yeah. And uh, I play what I see and uh, and it goes with market price, everything. So I, I manually execute the trade and I manually get out. I have my stop loss. That's the only thing. Sometimes not even that. It depends if it's a uh, a news event, then stop loss is uh, not good. <laughs> that can kill you very fast. Yeah. Enter and mark every time 100%. Yeah. yeah. No limit orders, no stop orders, nothing. I can give you an example why, why I think on my point of view, maybe Henrik have the same point of view or he have a different point of view. You can say something about this. Um, mm -hmm. Why I use market orders? Because when I see some price action, I will become directly into the market. I know I can be, become a bad price, but I want directly in the market. When I put some, some limit order this in, maybe I, get, I don't get filled. Maybe I get filled. I don't like it. When I, I'm trade, I will become directly in and maybe I will become directly out in 30 seconds because I have enough profit or I, I take the losses. So it's my average holding time is most of the time 30 seconds, one minute because of the trailing drawdown. Henrik, what is your point of yeah. this? Yeah, I think I agree with you with uh, everything you say there. And uh, I, 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 have, I have used stop orders sometimes um, in my previous strategies uh, on news, but uh, yeah, the slippage can be humongous and then uh, you end up making nothing or just a little bit of 
what you could have made if you just played by intuition and the feeling. Because most of the times you have a feeling where the market wants to go before it does it. Okay, so Morat, uh, come please live. So come come live, ask questions. Hey, I, I wasn't sure how the format is. Yeah, um, I know, you, you can come so in. so many questions, yeah. Uh, I, let me now kick your ass, okay? Sure. <laughs> I'm 100%, I'm now, I'm now ready. Um, when you think about the fees, give a shit about fees. What are fees? Fees means it's maybe one tick or two tick in the futures. Give a shit about this. Mm -hmm. Why you think on the fees? Yeah, the, the fees can be really big. The fees can be put you out of the game, but don't think about the fees. Uh, because you need only two ticks, maybe one tick, then you handle the fees and then you're in a profit. Give a shit about the fees. You must think about only on your position size that you don't get mm. too big uh, or you can go in very big and then take it. So, and when mm. you think about the fees, think about the micros and think about the minis. So if you trade maybe the M and Q, you pay a lot of fees. Uh, when you trade the NQ, you you trade less. So you must think about like this, but never think about the fees. If you think about the fees, give a shit about this. It's only one or two ticks, what you have to do. Mm -hmm. so don't think about this. I know fees can be really frustrated. Henrik, it's it's really frustrating sometimes. Maybe you have 800 uh 800 US dollar profit and you, <laughs> your profits are 400 US dollars. And at the end, uh, you get only 400 US dollars. But this is the game, man. I'm, and in Germany, um, um, we have some, some words. It's good to pay taxes because when you pay taxes, you have, you have make money. And when you pay uh, the highest taxes in Germany, it's the best ever what you can have. Because you be rich, you you are a motherfucker rich person. So, <laughs> and this is this is the same in the fees. So when I pay maybe thousand US dollars or two thousand US dollars fee, man, I make a motherfucker profit. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. So, please never think about the fees. Fair enough. No, just curious uh, because an evaluation <laughs> account if that comes into the factor, but I. I, yeah, I, I agree with your point. It does in a way. It does in a way because uh, the fees are included in your trailing drawdown. So you have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if you uh, if you take a thousand dollars loss plus fees, then actually you have lost twelve hundred of your trailing drawdown, for example, if the fees were two hundred dollars. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But that is one thing to think about. But usually when I when I when I trade this account, I always have the in my case it's the rhythmic trader or trade of eight rhythmic trader, where I can see the the peak value and uh, the cash on hand, I think they call it. So the peak value is and the difference between the peak value and the cash on hand or your uh, actually the liquidate threshold, this is where you have to keep an eye on that all the time and don't let it run away. So I try to keep it like maximum 100, maybe $200 difference. So if I have a trailing drawdown at the start of $2,500, I never want to be more than $200 difference between uh, the peak and the actual value, which means that I could then have $2,300 trailing drawdown instead of 2,500, but not more than that. So in that case, the fees come into play, but I don't think about it when I trade. Yeah. yeah. I, I prefer using limit orders. That's why I was asking if there's a big difference between limit and market. No, it's uh, the fees are the same in the evaluation. So mm. when you trade your own bank account, um, then it's be a different. But if you trade for the prop, um, you have static fees. So the fees are always the same and make mm. no difference. Um, so, and yeah, maybe we will change your trading style in the future also. So. Let's see. Maybe. Okay. So um, don't uh, lose our line. So the second point of our part is, um, Henrik, how do we break through mental barriers? So what was first your biggest mental issue? 
uh, when you was in the in the challenge. I think uh, I don't know. Maybe we discuss something that you remember better than me. But the first thing that comes to mind is that I like to hold on to my trades, and that is not good when it comes to the trailing drawdown. Sometimes it's not good. Most of the times, actually. So I had to break that one. Um, yeah. Do you have anything that you remember that I said or we said? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Um, you you remember about our wheel? The wheel. The wheel. The wheel is. So, we have an idea. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It always comes back. <laughs> this is so the biggest mental issue from from yeah. from us. So, uh, so we came up and we have an idea. So mm -hmm. how we can how we can uh, handle this? So mm -hmm. we have an idea. Next day. We have a new idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. then, then we have again a new idea. Yeah. And then after then we eight come, days, after eight after, days, we're back to the same. The first. After eight days, we come back to the same idea. <laughs> so yeah. the biggest learning from, from the real is um it's not it's not the rules or it's not not the trading. Uh, the trading style is 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 it's not have to the biggest effect. On the on your way to get funded, the biggest way is your mental state. So and when your your mind will trick you always, and this was what, what the mind was doing with us. So he was saying, "Hey, nah, maybe this was not a good idea. Let's change our trading a little bit." And then we change it, we change it, we change it, we change it. But at the end, we will come back every time. So this is why I call this a wheel. Mm. So we have always the same ideas, and we come back every time to the same idea. And and we were saying about this. So the, the market is is not every day the same. Yeah. So and at the end uh, we will come about um the trading style. Um let's let's see what we have now on questions. Um bum, 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 bum. do any problems allow for swing trading? Uh Ian, yeah, what do you mean with swing trading? Is holding the position overnight or holding for long? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, do do any prop firms that you've encountered allow for holding overnight positions? Yes. Um, on the forex world, they give some someone. Um, it's it's calling like FTMO. They have some swing trading accounts, and I think other other prop firms have the same. So maybe the Fivers or other ones um, have the same. Um, Tessa is is, a, is is saying trade the pool. Trade to pool have it at the moment not. At the moment is day trading only, but they work on it that you can hold your stocks uh, longer. Yeah. I so, heard that uh, that they will have that ready this week. This week. Trade the pool. Uh huh. But you that's heard? just. Yeah, but it's unofficial. Yeah. Oh, now we we make some <laughs> lunch at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe trade the pool. Um, I have no idea. I cannot say something about this. Um, <laughs> I don't want to go in, in trouble. Um, yeah, maybe trade the pool have this also. So yeah, it's it's not many many ones in the futures world. I have no idea. I think they are, they have not swing trading accounts, but in the forex world and in the stock world, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, okay. Um, why did Henrik change his trading style? This is the point three. Oh, why do you uh, change your trading style? Um, and what do you was changing in detail? Um, I think we touched upon many things already, and that was like taking profit instead of holding on to a trade that went against me. That is one one of the biggest changes for me. I think um i changed from the five minute chart to the down to the one one and two minute charts and uh, i started to trade with uh, just a few a couple of indicators the smas sma8 sma20 and sma200 i didn't trade with any indicators at all before um i think one very big change that came to me 
over this period of time, over these two months, is like, I always wanted to trade. I always wanted to treat trading as a business. That was my intention from the very beginning. And uh, I tried hard to do it. But I see now uh, the last, I would say, I don't know, last month maybe, that it turned around. So now trading treats me as an employee. I don't have to treat it as a business in a way. So like if I'm, if I did something, if I'm, if I lost on a day, I compare it to my previous job, you know, when, when, for example, I put together a pump or something like that, I was overhauling a seawater pump or you name it, and the pump is not working. Then I have to figure out what I did wrong. And this just comes natural to me now. And it didn't do that before. So that is one of the biggest changes. I think it's not like changing the trading style. That's not an answer to the question, but it's just one of the biggest turnarounds I've had that I can notice since we started this. Yeah, okay. Um, Tessa, um, maybe uh, you can come with, uh, with your micro and can clarify that um, trade pool is not from CVT. So what is the relationship between or Ian? So um, yeah, so chat with traders, uh, we partnered with uh, trade the pool uh, for the trading contest. Uh, and that's, I mean, it's a, just a limited partnership uh, for a temporary period of time. Um, and that's all, but we don't have any other um, relationship uh, any long-term permanent relationship with them okay and trade the pool is not the pro firm of cvt so for right. clarification um because we get the message um, in the chat and that we can clarify it. we get the point henrik and mm -hmm. tessa was asking you mm -hmm. henrik knowing what you know now what you have done uh, anything differently in your journey to becoming funded the first two things that comes to mind is, uh, first of all, I would have tried getting, uh, I would have tried this earlier, sooner, uh, but I simply didn't know about it. I didn't know that it was an option for me. Uh, I thought it was like out of my league, like I said in the beginning. The second thing is that uh, probably <laughs> I shouldn't have gambled as much as I did in the beginning. But I also think that that was a, a learning experience. It's something like, I'm not sure that it was really bad. It just, uh, we lost 10 days. That's what we said, basically two weeks or 10 trading days on this gambling. But it's also, it makes you feel where are the boundaries. And, and I like that idea to feel out, to actually reach the boundaries. So then I know, okay, this is that side. And that is that side, and I have to stay in between. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, so, were you consistently profitable before going with uh, the funded account, and then there was some trouble, or did you care about being consistently profitable before you went with a funded account? How how did that work? How did your profitability work before and after? So I, I wouldn't say that I'm a consistently profitable trader yet, even now. <laughs> um, I, I was somewhat consistent, I think, uh, for a couple of months before we started this challenge, me and Patrick. But uh, like I said, I had like a few weeks or a month of uh, consistent losers, basically before we started this and I just thought I had to do something because uh, the market has changed something has changed and my setups doesn't work anymore but I had I had come to the point where I was more or less a break-even trader and I, I took out I started to take out the salary from my trading account so basically I had for the last couple of months uh, before we started this I took out 50% of my salary from the trading account and the other 50% from my business so I was in the starting fits, I would say, of, of become, being uh, consistently profitable, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Scott, you know the three stages of uh, becoming profitable? 
Okay. The maybe first I only know maybe I only know the first stage of being profitable, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. The the first stage is um you make losses. So this is a bad stage. And the second stage is um you get break even, uh you take your wins, you take your lose, you take your wins, you take your lose. So this is the second stage. And the second stage is the, the most challenged um part. Because on the on the second stage, most of the people get frustrated because they don't see uh, any any light in uh, in the dark, um, and uh, and then they become uh, this, this on the sweet part. They they have only losers only one day each week, and now it's the part to how big is your loss in in the one day of the week. Uh, take your take your losers very smart. So this is why I. Preach every time um, to Henry, cut your losses very fast. Bam, 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 get out. If you see that this, this trades doesn't work, go out. Um, because the market is so so sexy, it gives you so nice setups. And um, when I see something in, in other communities, um, most people get done of the day in the first um, two hours of the trading. Because they, they, they use his, his buying power the first uh, on the first two hours when the market is open. And I have no idea why they do this, because when I when I when I real talk to you, um, the best opportunities will come in the middle of the day and in the end of the day. It's always the same. <laughs> so um, when you you can watch back the last sixty days, you have the best best easy trades. I call it the easy trades where you can make easy money. I know it's not easy to make money, but in these trades you can go big and it, and it falls very hard. Because for myself, I like it more when we come down, when the market goes down. Because when we get down, then this, this goes fast and we can make fast profit. So when we go up, it's, it's like step by step by step by step by step. And then mm -hmm. the market comes down in maybe five minutes. And this is, this is the easy trade. This is what I call the easy trade. When, when we are in this area, then it's easy to make money. You can make maybe a bigger position and you find your ass in a good good profit area mm -hmm. what what time of the day do you find that this easy easier setups uh, occur the, the the easier setups is in the middle of the day and then the end of the day and and it's it's easy to say why because when the market is wake up and maybe it's it comes down or maybe it comes up and you can watch uh, what's going on with the market. It's 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 better to watch what what's what's going on with the market, and then see when the market touch, maybe in resistance, maybe in support. And you know now is the point that the market will will change its direction. And when when you know the point, then you can go in. Then you know the direction, and then you get the easy trades. Then you catch the easy trades. And you must be watch carefully uh, when you trade maybe the indices. Watch carefully um, the Nasdaq and the SPY, so that they get in the same direction. You have this often, so we have this last week, <laughs> Henrik. You may remember. So the SPY is climbing and the Nasdaq <clears throat> will falling, but the Nasdaq is doesn't falling because the SPY is climbing. <laughs> But the Nasdaq looks like ready to fall. And when you notice that the Nasdaq is looking ready to fall, then wait, watch the S&P. Watch when the S&P comes to the resistance and he cannot break it because the Nasdaq is, is coming to fall. He's ready to fall. And when, when the, when the S&P is falling, then the Nasdaq will falling so hard. So this is maybe one sign where you can looking for. And this, this is the easy trades. This is what I call the easy trades, where you can make easy money. In the other trades, you will stop out, you take your loss, you take small profits, and at the end, maybe you have break even, or or you you have losers, or you end you end of the day with you touch your dough down or something like this. But Henrik, I think it's it's your show. You can say more about this. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I was uh, actually before we started with this, I was always trading. Uh, with Dow Jones on one monitor and uh, Nasdaq on the other, uh, and I, I over the months I found some confluence rules. Let's say that uh, exactly like Patrick is saying that you can feel that one market is more hesitant than the other, 
and the hesitant market is the one that you want to short when the other market is uh, has reached its uh, resistance level or is ready to go down then the the first market will fall very very hard and that's a game i was playing before as well this confluence game so totally i agree and uh, the trick i think especially for a beginner trader is to just have the patience to wait for this and not trade in the meantime yeah not over trade just wait for it yeah yeah and watch carefully uh so we have on our charts the sma 20 208 mm -hmm. and watch carefully if we have some some bounces or holdings maybe the 20 sma uh i give you an example so on friday this buy was always bouncing on the 20 sma on the one minute time frame and it looks like now we we came down but we don't came down because the the spy was always um in the end of the day touching the 20 sma and then he came back boom 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 but at the end of the day uh, the spy cannot hold um the 20 sma and then we get coming so hard down and this was the point and this is patient this is what henrik say wait have patience look for the signs what the market gives you and then catch the easy trades so tessa is asking a question now that you're funded the pressure of getting funded is no longer there right so does this change much your strategy going forward ah let me say something before you go ahead henrik okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. this is this is some some question where only people can ask who are not uh, trading with a profit because uh when you get funded you know uh, you have the same rules or uh, they change the rules uh, from from uh, from your um, evaluation. So you get the same rules what you trade in the evaluation. So and now you have a live account. So you cannot trade. You, it, it's not good to change your strategy now because with this strategy, what you have, um, you, you get funded. So when you change now your strategy, you get maybe lose your funded account and this is not so good so have the same strategy but place more safer because remember always how long it's it's take to get funded and how much time you invest to get funded not the money the money is is the second part i think the time the time is is more valuable so you get not back the time but you can get back the money it's no problem but you lose your time and always remember uh, when you get funded about this but okay yeah <clears throat> i would say uh, just to add to that um no i don't, i think i'm just as nervous now maybe even more <laughs> nervous because uh, now is real money on the line yeah and i cannot just get the account back by paying like 20 dollars or something so now i need to be careful so i can tell you honestly that before i got funded I was trading one NQ all the time, even two NQs. And uh, my profits came quite big when they came. And uh, also I took some <laughs> bad falls when, when that came. But now I, I trade one M and Q because I want to make a buffer. <laughs> um, basically, I'm, I'm really afraid to lose my account. So I'm a little bit chicken now. And I, I, I trade one or two M and Qs. I want to have my buffer. I want to have like a thousand dollars, or preferably, I would like to have the the safety net. They call it uh, two thousand six hundred dollars before I can start to take out profit. I mean, to take the yeah, take payouts. So, yeah, I'm trading care more carefully now. <laughs> yeah, of course. But if you get uh, trading with the prop firms um then you know all the stuff so when you get funded you get 100 percent nervous and this is the point where the most people loses his account um on the first stage um i don't know i have no statistic but i can ask uh, someone who can give me some statistic about this how many people will lose in the first 10 days his funded account this will be a very great statistic because they get so nervous. And when you take your first losses, I think you don't take your first losses, Henrik, in the first beginning. 
but yeah. maybe maybe you take your losses in the first week with 500 US dollars on mm -hmm. your funded account. I'm be 100% sure that you get completely nervous and you make many bullshit tricks. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and this is the dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which trading tools and indicators does Henrik utilize in his trading? Yeah, so uh, like I said, I started to use some indicators, uh, very simple ones, the simple SMA, the simple uh, moving averages, SMAs. And that's simply because I, since I started with a one minute chart instead of the five minute chart, I needed to find some, some something to back it up with, uh, back up my decisions with also. So um, uh, Patrick introduced me to, to his old uh, mentor, not, not personally, but he introduced me to the, um, to the courses of his old mentor and uh, he's using the SMA. So I started to do that as well and, and more take on that style, which is better for the shorter time frames, I think. Other than that, I think uh, price action beats everything. And uh, I think we are talking about it a lot when we are trading, Patrick, as well. That, okay, now you, you start to feel that, oh, ah, the market wants something now. The market wants something. And then when you get that feeling, then you need to be with your finger on the mouse button and you need to be ready to click immediately. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's the only things. And uh, the other trading tools, I don't know. I mean, as I said, I, I start to use the level two data and uh, I can almost not live without it anymore. And uh, I started to use the market squawk, the new squawks, um, the, yeah, the options order flow. Um, I'm charting on trading view, for example. I mean, I'm just putting up my lines to draw patterns to see if I have some wedges or uh, triangles or whatever you call it but i'm not basing my decision on those that's more of like a guideline to see what kind of direction i think that the market might take like not 50 50 but it's 60 40 or 70 30 percent chance that it will go in one particular direction and when i have that in my head that i think it's going to go up for example then i just wait for this the nervousness of the of the price action to confirm that to me to take the trade yeah, so we have a question from Nuno. How do you define your risk management in your trading? Do you have intraday stop loss? Uh, a percentage from your account, like 1% or so? Yeah, I have, <clears throat> I have my intraday stop loss. Like uh, if I lose a certain amount in a day, then I, I, will not, I will not continue trading. It depends on how the market looks like a little bit because sometimes I can feel that I, I'm able to take this back. And that's also something that Patrick uh, <laughs> uh, put into my head that uh, don't don't be satisfied with losers. Don't be satis satisfied with losing. Take it back if the market will give it back. But you can kind of feel that if you're just losing and losing and losing like 10 times in a row, 20 times in a row, then OK, then I will never take it back today. But yeah. But this but is I bullshit. This is completely bullshit. So okay. you don't stop it. You don't stop it. <laughs> so because when you say some really great setup uh, yeah. and you watch the chart, um, you cannot say um, ah, I'm not trading anymore. Uh, when you no, will, no. when you when you really when you really mean, when you really mean this uh, professional and you say, hey, well, fuck, I I take my losses. I don't trade it. Then you must shut off your computer and sure. take a walk and come not back. Yeah. Otherwise, if you watch your uh, your charts, mm -hmm. um, you will take the trade because you think maybe now it's now it's a good time and now I can make my losses back and then you get your losses again. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. sometimes you bring your losses uh, back to the profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've done more uh, more often recently. I can be down. I don't. I don't count the percentage. I. I don't trade like 1% or 2% of my account or something like this. It's, it's more on uh, hard, hard stops or, or the feeling as well. But it's so many times that I've been down like $1,000 until the last two hours of the day. And then I take everything back and I go out with $300 plus. And uh, that's something I would never do in the past because I would just accept that loss and, and uh, yeah, not trade anymore. 
Oh, Henrik, um, can you give the people an example of what has happened when I have uh, maybe 1,000 US dollar loss or 2,000 US dollar loss or 3,000 US dollar loss? What mm. I will do? <laughs> but that's what you need to, tra to trade good. We all know that. You need to be on the losing side to, to put Yeah, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what I always do? You always uh, add to your losses and you add very, very aggressively. And so, then, then I bring it back. Then you bring nine, it back. 99% I bring it back. And I come back uh, with a big, big fat win. But 1% yes. is, oh man, I find myself in a very big, bad, big, bad ass position. But 99%, when I have 3,000 US dollar loss, I come back with 20,000 US dollars profit yes. because my, my position is so big. There's so many times I've asked you, I remember that. There's so many times I've asked you because we've been trading and you're like down $5,000 or something. And then suddenly you say, bam, I'm $7,000 plus. And I thought, what the fuck happened now? <laughs> then I know that you went in with 30 NQs and you did <laughs> on a losing position and you took it back. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah this, is, this is maybe your question. So um, have you some risk management? So I think, the risk management is good. Uh, I love to have a risk management, but at the end, when you are a full-time trader and you trade maybe the whole market session, then it's really hard uh, to don't take a trade. Um, yeah. So Tessa is asking, is going through the funded route recommended for all traders? I ask this because some people don't agree. Henrik. Mm. Yeah. I would say it is. It is recommended. I recommend it. Because there's a few reasons, but I think one of the reasons is actually the rules that they have they have slightly different rules from what you're uh, maybe you have on your own account and I think it's good to experience those rules and to to really try to abide by them because if you think long term that perhaps you want to trade for other people in the in a few years from now or something, then I think that if you have been trading for a prop firm and you manage to to stay with that prop firm and, and to abide by the rules, then this is like a good thing to have in your <laughs> CV in a way. But uh, I would also say when it comes to the money, when it comes to the, yeah, to trading with money, I was like, um, my biggest losing, my biggest loss, uh, allowable loss I had per trade in my own account was $200. That was maximum what I allowed myself to lose in one trade. And for that money, I can actually buy 10 evaluation accounts. So if I'm not really a consistently profitable trader that can for sure make money using my own funds, then I think I'd rather spend $200 on 10 evaluation accounts to learn trading instead of losing my own money in the process. That's one thing. So that's why I would recommend to anyone who is struggling, save your own money, keep them on the side, buy a few evaluation accounts, and yeah, see this as losing your money maybe, I don't know. Yeah, and also, um... I have also a personal view on it. Um, when people get not angry with um, to get funded, um, I can say that these people who would not agree to get funded, they have enough have enough buying power, um, so they can give a shit about this. So they can trade maybe with 100k, they can trade with 200k, they can trade with 300k. But if you are an average trader, a beginner trader, developer trader. Maybe you have only 10K, 20K. Uh, if something is good, you have maybe 50K. So you have not so much buying power. You cannot trade like a pro. And you can, you can have big losses. You can lose 500 US dollars each day. You can lose 1,000 US dollars each day. But with a prop firm, um, you have the buying power. You can, you can play the, the, uh, like a pro. So you can have maybe 300K, uh, buying power, you can have 1 million buying power, and you can lose more 
So you can lose 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 US dollars. And this gives you more comfortable in your trades, um, especially when you develop some trading strategies. And mm -hmm. also if you lose maybe 250 US dollars on your private account, you can buy maybe uh, 10 evaluations accounts. So step by step by step. So you don't have to lose your own money. Um, take this as investment, maybe put 300 US dollars on the side and, and take the challenges from, from the prop firms. So if you have not, not the ability to have 100K, 500K, 1 million, then I will recommend it for everyone, for every trader. And my personal view of this is in 10 years, we have no retail traders. We have, we call it prop traders. Now we call it retail traders, but in the future we will call retail traders prop traders. And we have the professional world, we have the prop firm world, and we have the big banks, but we have no more retail traders. This is my point of view. So I had a question from Eurasimo. When your position is losing, you added more lots? Ooh. Yeah. So my strategy is um, I hate to lose money. I, I cannot lose money because um, I talk about this with, with Henrik before often. So your first mentor, your first teacher in the trading world um, is always in your mind and you cannot change it. What this guy teach you, it's always in your mind. And my first teaching from my, uh, my early mentor was um, the casino rule. So the casino rule, I, I can explain it for you. The casino rule was, uh, you go to the casino, you lose 100 US dollars, fine. Then you put 200 US dollars, you, you lose 200 US dollars. You put in 300 US dollars, you lose 300 US dollars. Then you put in 500 US dollars, you lose this. Then you put in 1,000 US dollars, and you get back 5,000 US dollars. One, one point, you get, you get the winners on your side. It's only the question and how long it takes. And this is in my mind always. Always when I have losers, this means for me, hey, maybe now I'm in a losing position, but when I add uh, and I'm really good in adding in my losers, um, then I become more profitable. So I add always to my losing position. This is one of my, my key strategy, um, adding to my losing position sometimes. Um, but when I see that this makes really not sense because the market goes against me completely, completely wild, or I don't know, something is completely going wrong with my trades, then I get out because it makes no sense. Otherwise, I'm, I have a big fat loss. Um, yeah. And how long? And 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 the the biggest challenge. Uh, with adding to a losing position, in my view, is um, to add wisely to your losing position. Don't be too fast. And it's also the beginning of your position. Give you an example. So when you start, when you have maybe only as maximum buying power, 30 NQs, and you start with 5 NQs, then you fuck, then you're in a big fat position. Then you must add 5 again to get the half average price. After then you have 10. So then you must add 10 NQs that you can halve the average price. But after this, you have no change to come, come back uh, from, your, from your losers. So when you add to a losing, a losing point, it's always the point where you start your trading. If you start with one NQ, and then you, are, then you add two NQs, and then you have three, then you add again three, then you have six, from six to 12, from 12 to 24, something like this, then this is a good strategy. Um, it's always how you start your trading um, and then make a decision if it's, if it's valuable to add um, to losers, how many ticks are you far away to get and profit? And all the stuff. So it's sometimes it's not easy to say add to 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 losing trade. So I give many many points of view how you can play this really safe. Oh. 
I hope this makes sense. I think I think this is uh, interesting, Patrick, also because uh, you're adding to your losers, and I I have tried to do that as well, um, and I cannot manage it really well. I I took back some money, but I also blew some accounts due to it. But I add to my winners, and that's something we have been discussing that you don't like to add to your winners. Yeah, You're fuck, always, I lose you, always when I add to my winners. You add to your winners, right? <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think then we are back to 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 my first person that I listened to when I started trading. Uh, he was always adding to his winners, and and I kind of uh, found that I implemented it is as a natural part of my trading, so to speak. So for me, it's kind kind of natural to do it. Yeah, it's it's always the first the first person um, where you listen to maybe on YouTube on a podcast or something like this. This first this every first person this brand your mind so hard, and for every new trader, this is a big fat advice. Um, take your mentors or or your gurus or what you watch to YouTube very wisely. Don't follow any stupid bullshit gamblers traders i don't know because it's with brain in your mind so hard and you cannot fix it you cannot fix it it's always in your mind yeah so uh morad was asking me how much percent would you let a trade lose until you exit <sighs> Murat, this is not not a good question so um yeah please come on come on come on come on to the camera <laughs> um I have no percent because um, when I have a rule, you you think um, to to have a rule to have a percent when it's bad and when it's not. For me, it's I have no rules like this. For me, it's always I watch the market. When the market gives me the opportunity that I can add to my losing position, then I will do this. But when the market punch me in the face, like what I say to the beginning, everybody have a plan until you get the punch in the face then I get out. And no matter what, how, how many person it is, when I see it goes completely wild and I have no change uh, to come out just because um, maybe you think in, in person, I think in ticks, how many ticks are far away from, from my break even. So when I, maybe you trade the, the MNQs or NQs or something like this, if you may be far away like 60 ticks or 70 ticks, it makes no sense anymore to, to add to your losing position uh, because the average is too bad. And when, when it against you again and the market goes crazy and, and maybe you're short and it goes up again, then it goes so fast that you have a big fat position and you blow your account. And in this case, I have no person rule. I, what I do, I, I watch the ticks, how many ticks are far away from my break even. And I watch the market condition. Um, is the market goes completely in my direction? Is the market goes wide? Was there any news? I watched the level two. I watched the resistance from QQQ, from the SPY. If there's something what I can see, and when something makes no sense, then I'm get out immediately, immediately. I give a shit about persons. Yeah, no, I agree with that explanation. I just want just a reference for myself. Let's say, um, I don't know if you put stop loss, if you don't put stop loss, it seems like you don't, um, don't. when, when would you add, when, would, let's say you think it's going to reverse, how much, uh, in loss, would you start adding? Like how much would you let your trade sit? Yeah, I can give you some insight. What, what Henrik and I was thinking about. So we were thinking many times about this, when it's time, when it's a good time to add to your losing position and when it's not a good time. A good time is it when your ticks is maybe 40 or 50 points, under 40 or 50 points, then it's maybe a good decision um, to add to a, losing, to a losing position. When the market condition goes to your side because you have resistance and now it comes back down or something like this. But when you're over 50 ticks or maybe over 40 ticks, then it makes no sense um to add add uh to your losing position then it's it's too late and this is this is why um i can i can give everyone the advice if you're some some guy who add to your losing positions 
um, you must have always in the mind, what is my max position size? And then break it down to your first position size. So start maybe, maybe you have the, the max position size is 10, 10 MNQs, 10 NQs, start with one, then add, then add one again, then you have two, then you half your ticks. Maybe you're 30 ticks away, boom, you add one NQ, then you're only 15 ticks away. Maybe it's possible that you get break even or you make profit and then you make really good profit because you have a really good average price. Then you'll find yourself in a big profit position. And then maybe you, you're on the 15 and it goes back to 27 ticks. And you see maybe now it's a good time to add again. Then you add two NQs because you want half your tick size. Then you have four NQs. And then it comes to be a little bit dangerous. With four NQs, now uh, when you see your Doom or, or your PNL, now it goes really fast. Now you must be having a strong mind uh, because now your PNL is rising and you see your losses very quickly or you see your profit very quickly. And then it's a good point for you to know, make it sense again to add to my losing position or I'm going out because um, now it makes no sense again, because I have a big position for NQs, it's maybe a big position. But when you see the resistance, it's maybe only 10 ticks away, then add again four. Then you have eight NQs. But if you go 30 ticks far away, go out of your position, take your ass out of the, of, it make no sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say to you, Go out with two, go out with two, go out with two. Go out with every position that you have. Close it directly. Go flat directly. Because it makes no sense more. Take the losses. But be careful when you start. Start with, if you really the person, what I say, if you start really, uh, you're adding to losing, it's your strategy, one of your strategy. Start very, very small that you have the, the good points to average your prices very, very smart. Mm -hmm. the, this is the biggest point. Uh, many traders make it completely wrong. They start maybe with, with two NQs and then they add to your positions, but you're, you're directly in a bad ass position because to average your price to, to half, you must add two, then you're on four. And after the four, you have only one shot left. Then you're on eight, and then you cannot add any more when you have only 10 NQs as a power. So if you start one, you can go to two, you can go to four, you can go to eight. You have more, more possible um, positions to add your losers. So maybe you must make an, an calculation for you for yourself. If you're a stock trader, a forex trader, futures trader, or someone else, uh, how much can I add to my uh, position before yeah, it's I, really bad? Yeah. Thanks for thanks for answering. I that's I ask because it's it's very different from my trading style, so I wanted to kind of learn uh, more about this this approach. Yeah, but when you ask me about adding to a winning, <laughs> I'm not the one to adding to winning. I cannot yeah. add to winners, so every time I'm I fuck completely up. Uh, <laughs> my style is more like adding to losers. I don't know why, but yeah. My first mentor was uh, teaching me uh, the story from uh, from the casinos and why billionaires cannot trade and uh, uh, cannot go into the casinos because they will win every time. They have so much power. And this is my rule on the adding to the losing position. Make it so smart that you have enough power that you get the point where you get profitable. Mm -hmm. And most people who are adding to the losing position, they lose uh, because they they add too fast or they add too big or something like this. They, they have not smart strategy. Okay, so Henrik, we have now the, the last point of today. What are the three biggest lessons Henrik learned doing his mentorship with Patrick? Oh, let's go. I think my thing my single biggest lesson was to not not accept to lose money. That is something that uh, that I really take with me, and that I have changed. So, um, yeah, 
Tell the story about this. <laughs> when I when I kick when when was when I kick your ass? Um, yeah, it was this, in the early uh, stage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the first days or first week. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but you were saying like, why the fuck do you give back your money? Something like this, and uh, you know, uh, even a lost a lost profit is lost is lost money because I had a tendency to go up like, I don't know, 20 points or something like this. And then it came back on me and I was suddenly down 15 points. And you say, you say, you idiot, <laughs> you're stupid. Something like this. Yeah. Why do you give back your money? Yeah. And that really started to, to make me think. And uh, I can only say that uh, trading like this uh, with someone who's been doing it for, for so many years and, and to be that intimate as we have been with our discussions and trading has made me look at many things very differently because I can, I think that it's so easy to get stuck in this uh, in the trading uh, environment where you where you are talking about you know accepting your losers and and uh, be be okay with losing money or be okay with uh, the process taking time and all of these things but i was no no I, I i'm here for one reason i want to make money and i want to make money as fast as i can and i want to get rid of my other job and i cannot wait one more day to do it and the only way to do that in my opinion at least for myself is to really dig in to i don't know how to explain it but to trade for the money just trade for the money make sure that you get money on your account that's it that's the only thing you have to do yeah and, and, I, yeah go ahead patrick i no, I, I, I remember on two things um mm -hmm. i think the, the first time when i was kicking your ass uh was and uh, when i was your ip and the, the tab program and you say, yeah, I'm happy. I make yeah. all, I lose only uh, 10 US dollars for the week. And 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 I, I think you get a big private message from me over the chat the, the of trainers. And I say, how you can be happy to lose money? What motherfucker you are. <laughs> yeah. But that was the turning point for me. That was the turning point. I was asking myself, you know, first of all, yeah, I was a little bit, uh, whoa. What the fuck is this? He's, what's he saying? Like, you know, then, then, then I started to think, yeah, he's right. Why should I accept to lose money? That's not right. I'm here to make money, not to lose them. So that yeah. I can just say that that was a turning point for me. And uh, it doesn't matter what I do otherwise. I mean, I think I think we should all strive to be a better person and to live healthy and and all these things. But at the end of the day, what really matters is if you make money or not. Nothing else. Yeah. And the second point where I was remember, I don't know if this was the early stage also, but I was telling you the story about retail traders and professional traders. So retail traders, I get completely uh, unlucky, frustrated when they take losses. Yeah, mm. so they get completely pissed off. But they are happy when they make when 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 the stock was maybe on 500 US dollars, it was 500 US dollars in profit, and they came out with maybe 250 US dollars or 200 US dollars, and they get so happy. Woo! I make 200 US dollars. Who I'm the king? You remember? Mm. And then yeah. I told you. Man, they but are completely stupid. <laughs> what for stupid people? They are happy that they lose 300 US dollars. Yeah. Because they, they, it's completely stupid. Man, they was on 500 US dollars and losing 300 US dollars and they are happy. Hmm. Completely bullshit. Yeah. And this is why it's, it's so important uh, to, when you have profit, Take the profit, man. Mm. You have no, no you, you cannot say if you get a strong pullback and you lose your profit, or, or maybe you, you find your ass in a losing position. But when you have the profit, it's on your bank account, and you will find so that, always a good point to 
to enter again in the market, but you have your profit in your bank account. Yeah, and that is the second lesson, I think, that you can always enter again. And uh, I was always worried about the spreads or the fees, you know, again, the fees and uh, on the CFDs, it was the spreads that, okay, if I enter again, then I will lo lose so and so many points or whatever by entering again and not holding the, this position. But I would say, looking, you know, hindsight, then, then I make, I actually make more money now by just taking the profits when they are given to me and then being very alert to just go in again if the market shows that it wants to continue. So definitely this is the second lesson. The third yeah. one, I'm not sure. <laughs> What do you think, Patrick? The third one. I think the third one was um, the tools. You, you, yeah, you, yeah, feel, yeah. you feel naked when you have not the level two data or when you have the news. Definitely. So this was this was one big impact mm -hmm. on you. And it how was. to read correctly the mm -hmm. level two, how to mm -hmm. read correctly um, the time and sales data. Yeah. So how to read correctly um, the, the option flow data. I remember when I show you the option flow data, your mind was completely blowing. So oh, yeah. I was taking, I was talking to you, hey man, look at this big option uh, order and watch the chart, what was happened. And you remember, completely yeah. mind blowing. So you were seeing uh, how yeah, it yeah. would work. So, and this mm -hmm. was some, I think this was a, big great impact and the last big great impact was the news yes. so how important it is to have good news so that you can now uh, mm -hmm. have an idea can i go short now is this news really good or not or can i go long mm -hmm. yeah yeah no that's right that's the third lesson to to use those tools for sure yeah and right now it's become like I don't think I even think about it, the the time and sales, you know. I just see it flickering. And when I see it flickering in a different way than it was before, then I think, okay, shit, something is happening. Maybe I need to get out, you know. So one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, Henrik, speak to your audience. I must go for one minute to washing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's a saying we have because uh, when you need to go to the bathroom, we say that we need to go to Washington because uh, that's something that Steve said and we, we couldn't make out what he said uh, because we are not native English speakers. So we say, uh, I mean, if we need to go for a piss, then we go for a piss. And if we need to go for a shit, then we say we need to go for a shit. We don't say that we need to go to the washer, but this is what uh, <laughs> what Steve said. And we said, what what's he saying? You need to go to Washington? What's that? So that's what Patrick is doing now, taking a trip to Washington. In the meantime, while I'm here alone, I don't like to be alone, but uh, still, if somebody has any questions, then go ahead. I, I guess I have another question. Um, I think it's really cool that you guys worked so closely together for such a long time. And being new in this community, um, is that something that's quite common or did that happen organically or did, did you reach out to Patrick or how did it start? I don't know. It's uh, as I said in the beginning. He was my accountability partner from the from the start, yeah. And I think I guess we just uh, started to communicate a little bit more than what is required, perhaps, from an accountability partner. I guess we had we we are different in some ways, but we are also much alike. I think in other ways. So we kind of found a, a common uh, common ground to to discuss from and. Uh, then I don't remember how it happened, but I think when we started trading together, it was more like Patrick said to me that, come on, you need to show your chart so that I'm not bullshitting him. You know, that uh, I can say whatever I want to say when I'm, when I'm reporting to him, I can say that, okay, today I made X amount of dollars and I took 10 winners and I had two losers. And he was like, come on, show it to me, show me the chart. So then, uh, then we start, started to trade you know over zoom and I, I i had my chart on live you know for him to see and then when i sometimes when i took a trade and i had the markers on the chart as well so as soon as i take a trade 
there will be a like a mark. I, I trade with Ninja Trader, so you have this arrow, you know. And he would just tell me, ah, that's stupid to take that trade. You know, what the fuck did you do? And then I'm like, oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so th that is accountability. That is real accountability for sure. And then it just kept on, you know, we just made it a habit. Yeah. And we trade now every day together. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and Washington is washable. Yeah. So. yeah I, explain, I explained the story to the guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I mean, nice, nice, nice. I think us northern people, the Scandinavians or whatever, the Europeans, maybe we're not so sensitive. So we just say when we need to go for a shit, then we, just, we say it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, I, I missed the point. So fuck. I, yeah, I was thinking um, another good point, what we have learned together is um, when you work together with someone, it's not important um, the money, if you spend money for mentorship or something like this, it's more impo important how much value you can give uh, each other. So when I remember when I worked with, with Henrik, so we give us together really great value. So we share together many things what we not share with the community or it's always about us it's private so he was sharing with me his insights from his back testing i learned something about him because he's an engineer he has a completely other mindset and i share something with him so what i was told you it's it's always how you can give value for other people if you chose maybe uh, you are in a tab program and you have an ap it's really important um, that both together have value. So it's, yeah, you, you are the accountability partner, but at the end, it's good to have value. And me and Henrik, maybe it was a fantastic match, but what the, what the biggest learning is for myself, it's, it's the value, what you can give each other. So, and I would say the, the value, what Henrik and me is giving is 50-50. So I learn also many things from Henrik. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I think um, the yeah when I was in Washington yeah I was quick flying to Washington. I was thinking about the biggest three lessons um, what Henrik was taught, and I think they give in my opinion maybe um, Henrik is right because we we don't think about this at the moment, but I think the the biggest the biggest lesson is you need someone who's guiding you you need someone who's professional so what i will mean with this so if you have some partner who is on the same level like you or a little bit above you um he have not so great impact he cannot guide you really hard so i'm 16 years in the market henrik is maybe two years one year, three years, I don't know. But I have the impact of him that I can guide, guide him. I can, I can show him the way, how, how we can go to the funded level. I can motivate him. I can show him the way. So I think the biggest lesson is you need some professional. You need some professional who guide you through the process. Maybe I'm wrong, Henrik, but no, absolutely I, I think this is, this is the number one. Absolutely, and and it's so um, uh, how to say it? it's so um, I just lost the word, but it's pushing me. It's pushing me forward when I see someone uh, who I can, in a way, identify with on a private level. I see that person making the kind of money that I want to make, which is my goal, and I. I can see how he's doing, how, how he's, uh, I, I cannot see maybe how he's doing everything, but I can see the, the process in a way, what he is doing during the day. This gives me a completely different uh, perspective, I would say. At, uh, and that is a kind of perspective that during these two months that we've been trading uh, for, the, for, the, for the prop firm challenge together, these two months I think have given me as much as I've been given from whatever I've been doing before for eight months or even a year. 
So this means everything. And I think I, I would recommend anyone, even if they cannot, even if they are not as lucky as I was to, to find the right uh, accountability partner at the very start and to, to connect with that person, then I would rather pay for it. I mean, I would, I would spend whatever hundred or thousand dollars to get someone who is really doing this for a living to show me his ins and outs and, and what he's doing. For sure, 100%. And that's what Patrick has been doing. And that's, that's I'm really grateful for that. And uh, besides that we have fun, then I think that I'm really privileged also to, to be trading with Patrick and, and uh, that I can give him some value also. That is, uh, I'm really happy if I can do that for sure, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so wow, ten o'clock now, but almost so, two hours. Yeah, two hours. Nice, nice. Um, but yeah. we are now open for questions, so maybe we can have ten minutes for the questions round. Um, if someone has questions, he can come on and ask every question what you have. Yeah, Patrick, I have a question. Um, yeah. As you said, you had you had it uh, more or less uh, when you had like losing positions, uh, but you do that with uh, with uh, your own account, right? Not with Propria. No, uh, again, it was uh, English is my second language. Sorry. Can yeah, you yeah, no can you re no can worries. you replay I, 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 slowly, please? <laughs> okay, so um, when you had it more or less like the strategy, right? What you what you what mm -hmm. you explained. Before yeah. you ha you do it on your on your on your private account on your own account, right? Yeah, I, I do it both. Um, I do it on my you, private account. You you don't do it with the prop firm, right? Yeah, I do it on my private account. I do it with prop firms and I do it with investors. So okay, okay. I do it with everyone. So if someone was trading with me from my investor side, say now what they get. So they know I'm I'm. I'm the crazy one, but they know they can make tons of money, but they know yeah. that, that they can lose money. So it's, yeah. a, and for my private account, I do the same strategy. This is why when you, when you watch to the podcast, I blow up so many accounts because sometimes yeah, the strategy yeah. doesn't work. And sometimes I told you nine, 99%, the strategy works so good and you make so much money. And then you have the 1%, where you lose everything. If you don't mm -hmm. cut your losses very fast. And this is what was my learning. And this is what I was um, teaching before to have a good um, good strategy to, uh, to um, add you to your losing positions. I have before no, not any good uh, losing strategy. I was adding as a shit, but now I have a good strategy. I will think I have a good strategy. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, it works with with a big big account. Like when when you trade with millions, sure, it's like it's it's it works with one hundred percent. But when you need to build an account with like with propians and and everything, um, you know, it's you need to to be technically with your heading position that you said before, that you said before, right? Yeah, correctly. And you can do it okay. with a small account also. Yeah. So yeah. you must not. Maybe you trade shares or I don't know. Um, but when you normally buy one lot, 100 shares, you can buy, you can start with 10 shares. You can start with yeah. 20 shares and then add to 100 or something right. like this. So it's always like your starting position. No, um, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding more your strategy and, and how it works. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's clear. It's, it's clear. Okay. Thanks a lot, Patrick. You're welcome. Always welcome. No, no. Let's go. Hi, Eric. Um, one question. Because you are uh, still working, I think, um, how did you manage to organize yourself to be able to um, trade live with uh, Patrick? Did you commit to a certain schedule or are you able to remotely work? So what's your process? Because I am, the, I am in that situation and maybe I can learn a lot from you about that. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And that's been a, one of my biggest headaches, I think, in all this. Um, because first of all, I was, I was very privileged uh, also there, uh, let's say one year ago or 
a little bit less when I started to to really dig into trading. I had a colleague, a, a former colleague of mine, who basically just wanted me to uh, to give him technical advice, and uh, I think uh, I have gathered a lot of uh, knowledge and experience over the years. So when it comes to technical stuff and, and in the marine sector, then I can give a lot of good advice, I suppose. And he was just simply paying me for being there. So I was just sitting next to him. We, you know, we had two offices and uh, we have a door between our offices and we're just sitting there in, in uh, me in my office and he's in his office and uh, I'm just trading. And then, then when he want to ask me something, then I have to answer him. That's one thing, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, I'm working remotely also uh, a little bit because I'm kind of helping a couple of companies with uh, uh, making drawings, engineering, and uh, calculating load calculations and, and these things. I try to get rid of this as much as I can now when I see that the trading start to work, start to really work. But uh, I'm still working like, I would say, two, maybe three hours a day with that other job. And it gives me enough to, to have the security that I don't have to rely 100% of my trading performance. But it also gives, gives me enough uh, free time to, to trade with Patrick and, and to trade 100%, especially now when I started to trade the American market. So then I, I start, I come to work around 9.30 in the morning. yeah, And then I just spend two, three hours on, on, uh, on my company, on, on my customers. And then after lunch, I kind of start to prepare for the markets. And then at 3.30, our time, European time, we, we start to trade. And then I, I, I trade until 10 o'clock at night. And then I review my trade. So I'm home by 11, maybe, at night. And then it goes again. 9.30 next day, I'm back in the office. Takes care. I take care of my customers for three hours or so. And uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, and, and we, miss, we miss one point. Um, uh, for for the funded fast, um, you was make holidays, yeah. Yes, I said to everyone that I I need to have a holiday, so I made it a complete. At least I tried to. I did my best. I would say, to to uh, make a complete break from from all my other um, jobs, between the first of June until the eighteenth of June, because I thought that, uh, yeah, this is the time when I really need to prove to myself. Do I have the capability, if I can concentrate 100% on trading, do I have the capability to make it, to get myself a funded account and to really make the kind of money that I could live from? So I took that vacation and uh, I was one week late with getting the funded account. I didn't make it for the 18th of June. I made it for the week after, but still, I think uh, it proved a point for me. And that was in, in very important. Psychologically, it was an important step to take to just tell people that, no, I'm not available. I really wanted to, to focus on the trading. And that was important psychologically as well for me. Totally respect, Henrik, because I really know how difficult it can be to commute between the work and the trading and the trading and the work. I also try to reserve to myself about three hours trading in lunch because I am in the UK time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a mess, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but it's it's the only way now. But uh, like like yourself, I also would like in the future to reduce uh, hours in the work and commit uh, increasingly to to trading. Yeah, many thanks. If you have uh, if you want to discuss this further and more in depth, then uh, then we can do it later, Daniel. That's yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and also, Henrik, uh, I remember we have a discussion about this, yeah? So I was told you um, not, not to be soft um, with your customers, you remember? Mm -hmm. So um, when, you, when you're in a big world, in a big company world, um, if you send some email to someone, maybe you get feedback in 24 hours. This is completely normal. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was told you to talk, uh, talk to your customers and say them closely, hey, this is my, my time where I hear to, to answer your calls, where I answer your emails. And, this is, and, and the other part is my, my uh, working time. I never answer any, any telephone call. I will never answer any email because this is my working time. 
and mm. I will not dis uh, not disrupt in my working time. If you disrupt me in my working time, then you have to pay a bigger fee. Yeah. You remember on our discussion about this? I remember, but I have, and I have, I know that I have such a big problem with that because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a type of person that when somebody somebody asks me for help, then I, I want to please, I want to help. And uh, I, it's it's so difficult for me to say no to someone who, who is asking. And I cannot say that I went 100% of the way that we discussed, but I went a lot further than I expected that I would. And I'm happy that I did that. And um, I think it's very important actually to be to be consistent to trade every day and to see it to really see it as a job i said that it was a turning point for me a few weeks or a month ago that i don't see i don't see the problem to treat trading as a business anymore i feel like an employee of the markets right now employee of the market man yeah. nice this is the biggest word today <laughs> i'm the fucking employee of the market <laughs> so i just have to please him when he's ready to please me and that's you know then i get some <laughs> <laughs> this is a good quote man i'm the employee of the market nice yeah okay um other questions no perfect then we are done